What a fantastic view, eh? It's not difficult to see why the natural world has inspired generations of writers to pen hymns extolling the wonders of creation. And we're going to be singing those hymns on this week's Songs of Praise. I'll also be meeting some people who are making a special effort to care for the world that we live in. We'll visit the 12th century church, which is one of the first in the country to embrace solar power. We'll meet the woman who keeps pigs because of something she heard in church. And the couple who had an environmentally friendly and money-saving wedding. If you're trying to live a more environmentally friendly lifestyle, then chances are that you're already thinking about your food miles. Buying local produce at a supermarket or a farm shop like this is a great way of going green and reducing your carbon footprint. There's lots of other ways too, from switching to low energy light bulbs, using greener modes of transport, and recycling your paper. It's impossible to tell whether it's too late to reverse the damage caused by mankind, but everywhere you look around you still see God's amazing work in action, and that's celebrated in our first hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth. This is the Church of St. Dennis in Sleaford. It's a beautiful, traditional church building dating back to the 12th century. But behind me, up here on the roof, there's a bit of a surprise. It's a 12th century church which has been developed throughout the centuries, of course, but now on the south aisle of this church, we've got a solar panel array. We are God's stewards. We have a responsibility for his creation. And I feel as Christians, it's something that we should embrace. I hope that in five years' time we'll still be generating electricity, they'll still be making an important symbol to this community about what can be done, and hopefully others will have followed as well and sort of said, this is a good project, it's something to celebrate, it's something to take on board ourselves. Bless, we pray, 
the installation in this church and grant that as we seek to reduce the carbon footprint of this place... We've only been running for a couple of weeks and we've saved over 200 cubic metres of CO2. So in a way, you're helping save the planet? Well, I think it's more accurate to say we're helping to save humanity. I think the planet will survive, but we won't unless we behave more responsibly and, and live more ecologically. What really worked for this project was devising a way or finding a way where we could attach the panels to traditional lead roll roofs without drilling into the fabric or doing any damage. Finding that was the thing that really broke it for us, made it possible. We have hundreds of people visit the church as a tourist destination. We have a regular worshipping congregation that numbers hundreds. So we were really pleased to be able to make a strong statement that could be seen by so many people. And this was the place to do it. Interesting also, I suppose you're getting people into the church that wouldn't normally come into church, just to check how much energy you've saved. Oh, dozens. It's why we're holding this big service with the bishop dedicating it and inviting so many people. Now, oh, the million dollar question. I wonder how many uh, solar panels the bishop has dedicated before? I think this will be his first one, but he loves a challenge, Bishop John. And even on a day like this, even on a day like this it's, it's generating. generating. We have both <laughs> God's blessings at yeah, once. That's right. We are celebrating the gift from God that is light. In the same way we're gifted and blessed with, with wind power and all of these other sustainable sources of energy. And if we use them wisely, we really don't need to burn fossil fuels.